Kaylee K102.5 FM. Good afternoon to you. This is Council Conversations, an outreach of the City of Jonesboro and KLEK 102.5 FM, where we speak to members of the Jonesboro City Council to just kind of get their thoughts on some of the issues that are affecting the City of Jonesboro. And today we have Mr. Renell Woods in the studio with us today. So, Mr. Woods, just tell us a little bit about yourself, the ward that you represent, how long you've lived in Jonesboro, and what do you do when you're not being an alderman? Yes. Um I grew up in Jonesboro all my life. Um, I'm like 42 years old. <laughs> so you're probably the youngest one on the council. <laughs> well, maybe close. I don't know. Um, but also, um, I've, you know, been a long, long, res- long time resident. But also, uh, when I'm not a councilman, I continue advocating for youth and families here in our community. Um, I have a great family, a beautiful family of. Uh, my lovely wife, uh, Dr. Latasha Woods, who's a, um, a professor at ASU, and also three young boys, uh, Camden, Landon, and Kobe, uh, five, three, and eight. So uh, we got our hands full when I'm not a counselor. I mentioned that. I, won't, uh, I don't know if you mentioned that, but uh, what ward do you represent? Yeah, I represent Ward 5 here in Jonesboro. And posi- are you position 1 or 2? Uh, position 2. Okay, so Ward 5, position 2. All right, well, Mr. Woods... When and why did you first decide to run for the council? It's not a high paying job and especially with a lot of the issues that are going on today, you know, it can be a lot of grief and headache that comes along with it. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, basically, uh, when I was growing up, um, I didn't understand what a city council was. I didn't understand what city government was. Um, but as I uh, learned and was groomed through our community from many, many great mentors and pillars that I had an opportunity to spend time with, um, when I graduated college, I left uh, Arkansas State University and pursued my professional career in football. I uh, went out to Dallas, uh, Texas, and, and had a great uh, stint there. Uh, got a chance to work for the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, what did you do with them? Uh, well, actually, I was worked at Texas Stadium. Uh, I was I actually worked the game day. Uh, actually, I worked sales and, and merchandise, where right before Mr. Jones actually launched uh, his internet, global internet service. You know, you had Emmett Smith, you had Deion Sanders, you had Troy Aikman, all the greats. Uh, we actually got their jerseys and all the paraphernalia and sent all across the sea. So it was a great opportunity for me at a ground floor level. Uh, worked there for about a year and a half, and then I did my internship with the Dallas Mavericks, and I came back home. When I came back home, I launched the opportunity with City Youth Ministries. It was a dream come true opportunity for me because when I was growing up, again, The first thing I always said that when I get older, I'm going to find out how to do other great things to come back and help other young people find the way because that wasn't provided for me. So um, as I went through my stand at City Youth Ministries, it really got me so involved with community and I just saw another higher level, a higher calling to uh, run for city council because at the time, you know, we did a lot and we still do, but um, we have to ask for a lot of support. Uh, in what I do. And so that was an opportunity for me to run for city council to help give back and give blessings to the community. And do you feel that you have been effective in doing that? Do you ever have young men come up to you and say, thank you, Mr. Woods, for uh, the example that you set of what you're doing in the community? I look up to you. I want to grow up and be like you one day. You know, uh, that has occurred many, t- several times. Uh, you know, but the greatest thing is when you see a young man uh, or young uh, lady that, that you know that you work with that was going through a whole lot growing up, but then you see him working in our community, you see him going to school or involved in other um, activities that are positive. Just being a positive influence, I think if they never said anything, but seeing them doing the right things uh, speaks more than I could ever know. All right, well, that's certainly good. We are speaking with Mr. Rennell Woods. He is on the Jonesboro City Council representing Ward 5, Position 2. Now, Mr. Woods, let's talk about some of the accomplishments that the city has made in recent years. What are some of the things that the city has done that you are most proud of since you've been on the council? You know, the, I've been on the council eight years, and it's m- many different things that our city has done. I, it goes back 
uh, from the council uh, standpoint when we were looking at the straw floor situation where the, our dump and our waste, there was a gas leak. And, you know, we had to move many employees from out there from safety uh, and serving us serve, um, um, of the public safety issues uh, and uh, advocating for that. But moving them from there to their new building out there on Dan Avenue, um, you know, there have been many cases when you look at, you know, our roads, we have done a lot of work on our roads over the past several years. The traffic signals, hiring engineers, hiring um, many different other positions that, that, that are needed in our city. Uh, but I think, you know, what I've seen the most of all that our city has done and what I know when I came on board to bring the unification of just, you know, working together, uh, but also understanding that, you know, you can do, agree to disagree. And I think we have, you know, a unity of that in our in our council. Um, now, you know, it's a whole different uh, paradigm shift. I mean, we're living in a whole different uh, a different environment uh, in, nationally, but also locally. Um, but I think, you know, more so when you talk about public safety, uh, you know, we, we also uh, looked at how our over the past several years with our employees and, and looking um, at the pay scale, you know, with this Johanna, uh, Johanna, Johansson study, excuse me, that really kind of goes from um, the midpoint, to, excuse me, the minimum to the midpoint to the maximum, and looking at giving our employee raises over 550 employees at City of Jonesboro, I think that was very important for them to go out and be able to do their job effectively. Um, you know, there's um, several things that you know may have. Uh, been a uh, important issue to some and maybe not to others but you know when you think about public safety and you think about quality of life you know that's the two one of the two big important issues that I think all of our city citizens benefit from and those are areas that we continue to definitely have to work in to make uh, to make a better Jonesboro. Now you just uh, Mr. Woods you just mentioned about uh, the the pay plan and of course what's been in the current news is the police pay structure there is currently a proposal that is just it just now is going to be recommended in front of the full council to raise the police schedules of pay according to steps which was proposed by Jonesboro Police Chief Rick Elliott. So, Mr. Woods, what are your thoughts on that proposal and just the entire situation regarding police salaries and not just police but other first responders as well? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> I think at this point. You know, going back, you know, what we're looking at in our national crisis, and it's not just national, but I have to focus locally. Um, you know, there are some um, sit some situations and issues that we have to tackle fa head on. Um, with the police uh, uh, pay, you know, we, n we came to understand through the study that, you know, they were underpaid in a sense and I think you know since then we've given we've gave excuse me all of our citizens uh, a three percent increase uh, excuse me I said citizens all our employees a three percent increase um, that rose up the pay scale a little bit but you know with the police it's a whole different animal uh, but you know, at the same time you know you have to look at the entire play pay, uh, pay plan because if you don't um, you know, you could get the city in, you know, in, in some deep trouble uh, because down the road, you know, it depends on how the economy goes up and down. You know, you have to budget that, but also, and you have to look at that and really understand that. But at the same time, you have to look at, you know, where we are now and if what we can do. And I think uh, Chief Elliott has given a great uh, uh, proposal. Um, it's a, a step plan that we're looking at that could help, you know, and I think the biggest need, what I'm understanding, is the police officers that are just coming in. You know, we really have to focus on those, though, the new police officers, because that's what we're losing. Uh, I think right now we're at a uh, full capacity of staff, but I think having an extra sentence for that aspect of, uh, of, of targeting that area right there can help, you know, uh, recruit uh, um, and also uh, sustain our police officers over longevity, a longevity of time. So, Mr. Woods, you are in favor of doing something to help the police officers. It's just a matter of making sure that whatever is finally decided upon fits within the budget and doesn't get the city in any deeper financial trouble. I think we have to look at that, and I think, you know, we know that there's a problem. We have to address that. Okay. Mr. Woods, what are some other concerns that you have that are facing the city of Jonesboro right now? 
You know, uh, our city is growing. I think, again, going back when you talk about issues, I, I think of uh, public safety and I, look, I think about quality of life. Um, I think our city is growing at a, uh, a rapid rate. Um, when you talk about quality of life, you, 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 I think about children and families. I think about, um, you know, what this city is going to look like in the next 10 years. And, and I, you know, my whole work has been driven on the actual increase in population of our city because, you know, when you, when you talk about increasing in, uh, of people in our city, first of all, you know, it's good to have a, you know, increase and you get a stronger tax base. But if you don't have things in place to keep those people, then they go off and move elsewhere. And so I think uh, the quality of life issue definitely is a, a concern uh, to me and has always been a concern that we have to address. And when you say quality of life, what are kind of give some examples to uh, the listeners and to the viewers of things that could help improve the quality of life for the citizens of Jonesboro? Yep. You know, <clears throat> one example, uh, I think, you know, when we look at our streets and our roads, uh, you know, we have to go through our neighborhoods. You know, we have to look at, you know, some some roads still have potholes. Uh, some roads still, you know, have, you know, different things that, you know, that's sunk in that we have to address that we haven't um, addressed yet. Um, you know, we think about, you know, widening the different roads and make traffic, you know, more faster through our city. Those are issues that I think a lot of, you know, our people are concerned uh, with in our city, just you know, making get to point A and point B. Uh, you think about, um, you know, you know, Recreation, you know, and I don't—that's that's one of my soapbox. So I don't get off on that because I have a strong sports and athletic and activity background. But um, you know, I think we have to look at the the next level uh, and how we actually um, uh, provide opportunities for our, our families uh, to go to different places. Wherever it's a water park, if it's a you know a, a ample theater out in and and. Joe Mack Camel Park or the Craighead Forest or if it's, you know, just some different events where that we can look at even around the country that people are having opportunities for their families to come together or, you know, different uh, set age group populations to come together uh, to and have a good time to enjoy themselves and, and, have, and have a safe uh, enjoyment of, of themselves. All right. And while we're on the subject of quality of life, you kind of mentioned roads. And of course, one of the issues that has come up in recent times, especially in relation to roads, is drainage. So give your comments, Mr. Woods, about drainage issues and the city's long-range plan to address flooding and drainage issues. Yep. You know, um, uh, with that, before I go to drainage, I want to, you know, talk about the quality of life of, you know, it's a lot of big push also with bicycles. And, you know, that's uh, a really hot button, hot type right now. And, and I think, you know, different studies that you we can look at, and I think the, the, some of the studies say that young people, you know, are not even, and, and, and I'm getting back to your question. Okay. Uh, but young people, you know, are not driving as much as they, they, know they did in the past because they have a, something called a, a cell phone. They can pull up and find their information. And so they, okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm complacent. So, you know, we have to really address that, you know, with because a lot of people are really like to take, you know, the biking, cycling uh, effort. So that's something we have to look at it and look at the safety of that as well. But going back to the drainage issue, I think that is – crucial because you know a lot of our areas are you know in the floodplain and we have to definitely uh, address that I think we have taken measures to address that we just approved a 1.6 uh, million dollar um, expenditure to be able to look at how we can make sure that the ditches are clean uh, to make sure that we open up you know the sides and build the side rails uh, for the water flows, um, but I think it's, it's much, much more work to do. Uh, I know FEMA was here this week, and uh, they, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing all the information that they have, they had to say in our reports, um, uh, to see what, you know, what they're saying at this point, but I think well, we've seen a historical flood, and seeing that flood, you know, we never seen that probably in 20, 30 years. It was historical. Uh, I haven't in my lifetime. But, you know, it's not to say that this won't happen again. So we got to be proactive on this. we got to stay on top of this and, you know, and have to develop a system where this is, you know, a, a, a everyday common, you know, occurrence, even though it's not happening, it's not raining, but we got to keep it as though and keep it clean as such like it was raining. Okay. Once again, we are speaking with Councilman Rennell Woods. He represents Ward 5, Position 2 on the Jonesboro City Council. Now, earlier you mentioned 
that what something that you felt strongly about was the continued growth of the city of Jonesboro. So what do you think the city needs to not only maintain that level of growth, but to sustain it as well as be prepared for all of the things that comes with such a growing city? You know, um, that's a loaded question, <laughs> but um, but to answer that question and to my best ability, you know, our, our city is growing at a rapid rate. I think uh, the last statistic I heard that, you know, every it, we're growing about 3% every year. Uh, we're projected to be at um, uh, over 100,000 in the year 2030. And so uh, that's a, a strong concern. Um, as a city, I think you know we are are working uh, and and move and progressive uh, in in a lot of different areas. Some more uh, progressive than others, uh, but I think you know staying on the cutting edge. I, I think we definitely have to understand um, what our millennials are are thinking about. We have to understand what you know uh, a, a pulse on what the families, uh, what they're saying in our community. Our, our our community is made up of our families. Our, our community is made up of young people. Uh, our community is made up of our senior citizens. We have to continue to understand, uh, you know, what are the the necessity needs for them right now, so that we can actually project in our future to have those accommodations and to be able to continue to provide those services to uh, keep our citizens here, but also keep our citizens safe. Uh, to continue to grow and be uh, one of the number one cities in the state of Arkansas. And to that end, what do you see us as a city in the next 10 to 20 years? Because yeah. you mentioned that we'll probably be at 100,000 by the year 2030. So what do you think that, what else do you think that the city needs to do to get ready for that? And where do you actually, once again, see the city during that time frame? In the next 10 years? Next 10 years, even all the way up to 20 years. Yeah. You know, you have to have visionaries. You have to have visionary leadership. Uh, something I've, you know, haven't even brought uh, to the table yet, but something in my our campaign that we're going to talk about. But um, you have to have the visionary leadership, but you have to have uh, individuals that uh, truly understand, um, you know, what what this city has uh, meant in the past and where we've been. What I mean by that is where this city has, how, how this city has grown to where it is now. Uh, before you can even go to the future, you got to understand where you are now and where you've come from. And taking that in consideration, um, we have tremendous support in, you know, in, in, in medical. Uh, our industry is strong. Uh, you know, our health field is going to medical is strong. Our school district, you know, being having a, a, a capital ship like Arkansas State University, that is continuing to be uh, progressive and growing. Um, we have to take those, all those assets into place, um, you know, and look at how we uh, how we assess where we are right now, and look at other cities, and and, and maybe and, and I'll share this maybe you know uh, a citywide summit conference because a lot of the ideas that we see as visionary leaderships really sometimes don't come from the visionary. They come from smart people around them that are visionaries to make it happen, but have some type of uh, some leadership summit of our of our community, bringing people with credible ideas and capture that, incubate those ideas, and hear about what you know. Because there's a lot of people in our city that have come from all over uh, that have moved here that have seen things that are working. You know, we can th take things that are working or not working and develop a strategic plan uh, to continue to uh, have a greater Jonesboro. Well, Mr. Woods, we want to definitely thank you for stopping by the studio today. Is there anything else that you wanted to say to the listeners and to the viewers? Yeah. Well, I just want to say, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, KLEK 105 uh, FM Jonesboro. 102.5. 102.5, excuse me, <laughs> uh, for the work that you're doing here in Jonesboro. And I, and I see you in different places. Um, you know, just it just you know, cutting edge. You know, just trying to uh, make a difference in our community. And I, I take my hat off to you and your staff and and your volunteers that, and what you do. Um, you know, it, it, Jonesboro is a great city. Uh, again, I, I grew up here. Uh, it's 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 becoming one of the mecca. You know, uh, it actually is the mecca as far as Northeast Arkansas. Uh, but when you look at the state, I mean, we are looked at as the fastest growing city in the state of Arkansas. Uh, 
And so last year we were, and so I think that will continue to happen. And so we got to continue to, um, you know, stay engaged with our citizens, stay open and let them know what's going on. They can continue to share with us what's going on, that we can continue to build a, a greater city here which we're, in which we live. Well, Mr. Woods, we want to thank you for those sentiments. We want to, once again, thank you for stopping by the studio. This is Council Conversations and Outreach of the City of Jonesboro and KLK 102.5 FM. Mm-hmm.